On the sweeping Oklahoma prairie is an early 20th century homestead long abandoned. Two boys who once lived here launched an amazing exploration from this humble home. This is the story of Bud and Temple Abernathy, who at the ages of just nine and five set off on a series of trips across the United States. They were not accompanied by adults. They traveled alone on horseback and by car, in the saddle and behind the wheel. Temple and Louie, they rode horseback, you know, from Oklahoma to New York City when they were five and nine. We grew up with these pictures. Marilyn Abernathy is the daughter of Temple Abernathy. Her dad and his brother, Bud, were born on a ranch near Tipton, Oklahoma in 1904 and 1899. Their mom died of Bright's disease three years after Temple was born. You could say their dad, Jack, raised them with a free-range style of parenting. They had inventive minds, and they had a father who, his philosophy for raising kids was that he would treat them like adults. In other words, when they made a request to him, uh, he would listen to them. And if they could justify why they wanted to do what they did, he might tell them yes. Their dad, Jack, had been independent out living in the Texas Panhandle early, growing up, uh, working on ranches when he was seven, eight years old. It's important to know that Jack Abernathy wasn't a typical dad either. His nickname was Catch Him Alive Jack. That's because he was famous for catching wolves with his bare hands. He would literally stick his hand into the wolf's mouth and hold the lower jaw to keep it from clamping shut. President Roosevelt went on a wolf hunt with Jack Abernathy in Oklahoma, hoping to learn this unique skill. The Secret Service talked the president out of trying it. Roosevelt became friends with Abernathy and appointed him to be a U.S. Marshal. It turned out that he was as good as catching outlaws as he was as catching wolves, because he put hundreds of men behind bars. Bud and Temple heard these stories and jumped at the chance for adventure, too. The boys decided on their own that they wanted to go to Santa Fe, New Mexico, to see the governor, who was a family friend. They drew their own map and showed it to their dad. He gave the boys checking accounts and they embarked on horseback on their first solo journey. It was a two week trip and they camped along the way. One of the stories they exchanged with the governor when they arrived was an adventure with a feisty donkey they met on the trail that chased them for six miles. So the boys had heard all these stories. They wanted to get out and venture for themselves. This early success inspired them to think bigger and they began to plan a trip all the way to New York City. They had no doubt they would make it to New York City and see former President Roosevelt. And they wanted to see him because it was their daddy's friend. By now, word of these adventurous brothers was getting out. And then when they went to New York, the story was ahead of them all the way up there. People knew they was a coming. The boys saddled up and set out for weeks of riding and camping but they found people constantly greeting them along their route through six states. Instead of camping, they were welcomed into people's homes. They told their stories about life as young cowboys in Oklahoma, and their horizons were expanded by the conversations they had with the varied people who hosted them. They had these boots on, they had chaffs on, they looked cowboyish. And they were just so independent, and I think it was looked up, this is American. And the boys are dressed up in suits there. Yeah. Historian and author Larry Lewis wrote a book about the Abernathy boys and the times they lived in. He says what is remarkable is how engaged a country was in their story and how they welcomed and honored them. They met all kinds of political figures. The uh, governor of Missouri, the governor of Ohio. When they got to Washington, D.C., they wanted to see the president and they went to the White House. We just walked up there and said, we'd like to see the president. We've come from Oklahoma on our horses. So, okay. And then there's a knock on the door and it's, the Abernathy boys are here. Okay, bring them in. By the time Bud and Temple passed through Washington, D.C., they were on the verge of being celebrities. They were interviewed about their trip by the Washington Post. When they eventually arrived in New York, they were greeted by a parade. Uh, these two little boys were celebrities of the day. Uh, as they would go into many of these uh, cities on the way home, people knew who they were, and large crowds were there to, to greet them. By now, Temple was becoming a media professional, talking to numerous reporters. Advertisers noticed the boys too, 
which came in handy when the brothers decided to drive back to Oklahoma, taking turns in the driver's seat. They told her daddy, said, Daddy, we want to send our horses back on a train with you, and uh, we want to buy a car and drive it back. I suspect that even with the, the car trip, I think the Brush Automobile people were involved in that because uh, after the trip, the Brush Company used them in advertising for uh, a couple of years after that extensively, referring to them as the two little cowboys from Oklahoma. By now, you're probably asking, weren't Bud and Temple breaking any laws by driving a car, riding horseback alone, all unsupervised? In fact, in 1910, child protection laws did not exist. The constitutional amendment banning child labor didn't happen until 1924. It was common for children as young as four to work in factories, mines, sweatshops, and canneries. The conditions were often dangerous and unhealthy. Two young cowboys riding horseback across the U.S. made the news, but it didn't cause outrage. Well, I think that it was, life was certainly much different. Uh, I think that uh, obviously there weren't a lot of modern conveniences. Uh, the people who lived out on the farms and ranches uh, worked hard, uh, but, uh, and, and certainly they didn't have a lot of uh, modern luxuries. Parenting in the early 1900s was also very different from today. A popular book, The Care and Feeding of Children, said it was scientific to treat your children like adults. This meant putting children on strict schedules and encouraging them to grow up fast so they could start work and bring in an income. This picture from the early 1900s shows a mother with a baby on her lap, and her children are working, rolling cigarettes. Oklahoma had just been settled. We were a frontier-type people. Young people did a lot of things. And so going to work at the time when now you're basically starting kindergarten was not unusual. Jack Abernathy followed this philosophy. For example, after he found out the boys unknowingly spent a night with outlaws on their first trip to New Mexico, it didn't stop him from allowing their travels to continue. Their daddy got a uh, uh, piece of papers on a paper sack, brown paper sack, got a note from this outlaw, the head man, and told him, said, you've got two great boys, and said, we've seen that they made it through. But he said, if I seen you, I'd shoot you. While the Abernathy boys were adventurous and curious about the people they met, you could argue they were often exploited and put in danger. Advertisers paid them to participate in risky trips and challenges, such as a coast-to-coast 60-day -coast trip on horseback. And these two promoters out of New York City had uh, told them, said, if y'all can make this in 60 days, we'll give you $10,000. Apparently, they had the attitude that if something happens, well, it'll work out. They weren't fearful. It was a can-do sort of thing. Their last ride was sponsored by the Indian Motorcycle Company. They rode a 1913 two-seater motorcycle from Oklahoma to New York City. They crossed rivers and traveled unpaved roads without wearing helmets. They survived a crash that flipped their bike and injured Bud's legs. Despite the danger and what could have happened, they continued their journey. They wanted to do it, and they knew they could accomplish it. Bud and Temple eventually put adventure behind them for work and to raise their own family. Did your dad ever tell you stories about his trips when he was little? All the time. But yes, we uh, grew up with the story, and it was always exciting. Although not well known today, what Bud and Temple did was so new, so historically significant, it is amazing that Hollywood hasn't yet told their story. They were two young boys riding out of the Wild West. Their journey went viral through Telegraph and newspapers. Bud and Temple went down in history doing extraordinary things as children in what proved to be an, an extraordinary time in American history. Longriders Gill says that this is the greatest ride that's ever made. These boys explored America at an incredibly young age, encountering everyone from presidents to outlaws. People loved these young cowboys who exchanged their stories and inspired them to feel like anything is possible.